Okay, this is an Audi Q2. I just want to take a moment to talk a bit about our experience with the Audi. This is a hire vehicle and we hired it to drive across the Nullarbor all the way from South Australia and we've come all the way to Perth. We're at the end of our journey now and I thought I'd just take a moment to sort of cover off on a couple of things, what I like about it, what I didn't like about it and just the way we've used this particular vehicle of doing that whole drive. Uh, 3,200 kilometers is what we've ended up driving. We've used a company called iMover. I think it's I-M-O-O-V-A. Now iMover, they, I think they're like a middle company that they deal with car companies that want to get their vehicles from A to B. You can hire, you know, land cruisers that have caravans or camper vans. You can get camper motorhomes, you know, camper vans as well. Or you can get one of these. This is a luxury vehicle. This costed us a dollar a day. 10 days, $10. That's the agreement. The company uh, allows you to drive 3,100 kilometers and you get $400 back reimbursed to you. Doing this, what we didn't know and what was not in any fine print is there's always an insurance you have to pay uh, when you're transporting a vehicle from A to B and that's on you. The costs of the insurance were not outlaid to us whatsoever uh, in any of the correspondence and the water it's actually costed us. At the time when we got the vehicle, we had everything booked, we found out that if you don't do any insurance, if something happens to your vehicle, $14,000 excess you have to pay, that's on you buddy. However, to reduce that excess, it's going to cost you $77 per day in insurance and then the excess, if anything happens to the vehicle, will be $2,500. So that's very interesting, isn't it? The fact that it's an Audi, it's a European prestige car, uh, it costed us $770. And even if something happens, it's going to be still $2,500 excess. We did try looking online at alternative insurances, but there's not really anything there's a lot of scam type of things. Let's just uh, jump in the car and I'll talk a few things more through here. Okay. Open it up. It's a bit dirty because that's just the reality of driving across the Nullarbor, across uh, South Australia, across the Great Australian Bight and uh, through to Western Australia. We wanted to minimize as much damage as possible. So we actually went to Bunnings at South Australia. We purchased a couple of things for our trip and we've put um, some footrests, what would you call it? Mats out of cardboard so we don't damage their stuff. It's very dusty uh, all across the trip. This uh, car is a bit annoying. There we go. We actually purchased a bit of a plastic cover just so we don't damage any of the back here. Only two of us, so we've laid down everything flat in terms of the seats. Put this to protect things a little bit. And generally speaking, we were able just to put boxes. We had boxes in there. Our suitcases sit on this. We actually got two of these. This is brilliant. Yeah, $6 each, $12. We had chairs wherever we want to go. That's from Bunnings. Yeah, just at the back here, I'll just show you. It's got a motorized boot. To be fair for us, it was spacious enough. Uh, yeah, don't really know how that works, but old mate said if anything happens to your vehicle in terms of a flat tire, ring up Audi Care. I don't know where they are. Hang on, their number was here somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where it is. But there's some phone number you can ring, might be in the glove box. The guy that we got this vehicle through, yeah, when he handed over the keys, he goes, okay, so, yeah, pretty much it's just a car, like any other car. So, yeah, jump in and and off you go. And I'm like, oh, geez, uh, okay, how do I start it? This has a keyless ignition right there. So I'll just turn that on, foot on the brake, okay. All right. And then the mirrors start to move out. Yeah, system active. Okay, it's turned off the annoying alarm beep. Using this vehicle to go across the Nullarbor. Okay, I haven't covered off on that. If I did this again, I would not be getting the Audi Q2. To be fair, we're driving across the Nullarbor and we're driving 
past so many road trains. Uh, they are big trucks and some of them can be 50 meters long, hauling five carriages. They're going to muck around. So there are rocks flicking up and you can't help it. You're on two lane highways and the speed there is 110 and those trucks are hauling it big time. So you can get an understanding that driving this particular vehicle, you're kind of always on edge and like, Ooh, I hope something doesn't flick up and damage the paint. The car's dirty at the moment. Um, we did hear a big, to me it sounded like a rock maybe flicking up, but I've looked over the vehicle uh, and I can't see any, you know, crack point or anything like that. So chances are it may have been a bug. You're gonna go through bugs here as well. Uh, will I use this vehicle again for the nullable? No, and that's not because it's a bad vehicle. The vehicle itself is very economical. It drives generally at about seven liters of fuel per 100 kilometers. That's okay. It was pretty economical and however, you have to be aware this takes 95, unlegged 95. So you need the 95 octane fuel. That's a little bit more expensive. Don't use 91, which is the cheaper alternative and if there's no 95, you go for the even more expensive, higher octane, that's 98 unlegged fuel. So that's something just to be aware of. However, we're getting reimbursed um, by the company, $400, and we're easily uh, coming under that, so that's okay. At the end of our trip, the guy said that we simply have to uh, scan and email him our fuel receipts, and that gets reimbursed. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, $1,000 bond, and $1 a day, to use this vehicle so that $1,000 bond will get back however $770 is the insurance um, and that's something you just can't escape so just be aware of that if you're planning to hire any of these vehicles unless if your own insurance company has a cheaper deal or something you're going to be at the mercy of the company uh, through whom you're hiring the vehicle to use their insurance there's no no ifs and buts about it you're kind of stuck and that's it, you just gotta sign up. If I did this trip again, I would definitely have gone with a four-wheel drive or a little bit more of a rugged off-roading motorhome. Definitely a four-wheel drive like a Land Cruiser. Uh, if we had to tow along, say, a camper of some sort, I'd definitely be doing that. Reason being, this car, luxury car, you can't do any off-road exploration. Like, seriously, like you, it's not built for that. It's a nice car to drive, but it's not for exploring. You need a four-wheel drive. And we did actually one, one trip where we were exploring some salt lake, pink salt lake. We didn't realize just how long it was going to be, nor that it was going to turn into a gravel road. It kind of just seemed, it's just a bit further, but we were driving actually 12 kilometers in distance, and we were driving about 30 kilometers an hour. Whilst all these Toyota Hiluxes, uh, Land Cruisers, you know, Jeep Wranglers, and all of these, you know, uh, patrols and stuff they're flying past us so keep that in mind um, we took it easy we're careful we've still got to see one place but it's not for any side quests on the nullable in terms of the vehicle itself i have to say the audi hey it's a european car i don't really like european cars to be honest uh, that's just me but it is still a very very nice car very expensive car i think the indicator is up on the left hand side okay I'm used to my Toyota Prado, it being up on the right hand side. So that actually took a little bit of getting used to. Keyless start and the gears operates as per normal. This is pretty cool. It's got a control for the radio. Up here, you have a nice screen up here and you can put it on radio by just pushing this up and the screen changes. And then you use this dial and you can see it kind of goes up and down. You can go to media, connect your Bluetooth, you can go to your telephone. I don't have my call or phone attached. Go to map. So yeah, that is pretty cool. The screen is uh, actually really, really good. This is brilliant. This here, if I want to, this is like you write stuff on here. I've never seen that before. If I want to navigate somewhere, let's actually have a look. So I go menu, I go turn to navigation says, where do you want to go? This is now where I want to type, let's just say Perth. So I'll go P. Yeah. P. Yeah. E. 
Ah. Oh. Ah. Okay, and obviously when you find where you want to go, you just go down and it'll just, you, you press this down and then you can start your route guidance. That's actually brilliant. Something else that you do have here, if you want it, you can view your navigation, uh, what's on here. Let's just see if I can find it. We'll go to map. There's map there. And I'll see if it comes up. There we go. So there's a lot of controls here. I can change this whole view. I press the view here. And then it comes up with my map there. I don't have to stare over there. I go up and you can zoom in. Um, there's a lot of other functions in there, as you can imagine. You control your radio through here, or your passenger can control it through here. That's pretty cool. Uh, something else that I do like about this car is here. In here, this is a wireless charging bay. So literally you chuck your phone in and it'll start charging even with your phone cover on. So that's pretty cool. Sometimes when you leave a phone cover on, uh, on some of these wireless charging devices, they don't work unless if you take the cover off. This works brilliantly. It just turned on in about three seconds. It detects it and starts charging it. If you have a mobile phone that is capable of doing that, that is. Something that I don't like about this car is, you know, for how, I think these are pretty expensive cars. I think I was looking, they're about 50 grand or I don't know, somewhere in that price range. For a car that's 50 grand, it doesn't have motorized seats for the driver. Like everything's by hand. This, like what the heck? This is an Audi, mate. Uh, if I want to move the car forward, like, see that? I mean, even my cheap Hyundai Santa Fe has everything motorized for the driver. So the fact that this doesn't have that, I was very surprised. To turn your lights on is down here, okay? Auto and a few other functionality. You can dim the screen there through that. Look, there's not too much else to, to say about the car, apart from, oh yeah, it's got this and it's got the sunroof. Look at that. I don't know if that comes standard or how much do you pay for a sunroof as an extra, I don't know, five grand or something. How many times did we use that? I think I used it once and that was just to put my GoPro through it just to get a shot of the 90 mile straight road, Australia's longest stretch of straight road. And that's it. We never used this, found it pretty useless to be, to be fair. It's just one of those luxury things that Pretty much you never use. I've had vehicles before where you know, you've got a sunroof that's motorized and you just don't use it, mate. That's, I don't know about you. There's no room to sort of get up and it doesn't really improve much of the airflow. I didn't find that, you know, I'd rather have the air conditioner on rather than the hot air of the Malibu as we're driving across uh, and flies coming in at that. Loads of flies down here. The seat has seat warmers. You can press a button and on they turn. Oh yeah, here we go. Yep, there we go. Uh, seat warmers. Something that is annoying, and you'll have to be aware of this, is it's got electric brakes, and that's fine. Okay, you push it down, and the brakes released. Turn it on. But something this vehicle have, and it might be a European car thing, I hate it, I absolutely hate it, is when you're stopped at like a set of traffic lights, the car turns off. Then the moment you are about to take off, it turns on quickly. So that rapid ignition system where it turns off, turns on. I don't know what the deal is with that. I'm sure there's some sort of a fuel economy a reason behind it. But we absolutely hated it. Thankfully, there is a button to turn that feature off. And this is it. Okay. You press that and it doesn't do that. However, we didn't even know about that until we started playing around with all the buttons and then press that and then it no longer does that on off um, feature maybe some people love it we hated it um, and just found it to be absolutely annoying all right that's about it with the vehicle i don't really have anything else to sort of show you i hope you found this little chit chat helpful iMover we've used them before traveling from cairns down to brisbane we actually had a motorhome that was great uh, using one of these luxury cars to do this kind of a trip now, nah, just be aware of the uh, insurance costs and try sourcing your own. That's it for this video. Hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching.